Hey everyone. So apparently some of the stuff that I was doing with curves and surfaces and lines and arcs becoming nerves and all sorts of other stuff has sparked quite a few questions here at NX. And one of those was, why do things act really differently when I'm using a spline? It's a one degree single segment spline, but things tend to act we'll say interesting. Okay. Now, before I get into it, um, if you would please like the video, and if not, at least subscribe to the channel and share with your friends and other engineers and designers it really helps the channel. Um, you know, this stuff like this is kind of nuanced, gets into the detail of how the systems work. And I think the more people that understand it, the better, because they'll be able to solve some of the problems or resolve some of the things that they run into and uh, just make everyone better. So thank you for that. Anyway, get back to this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna go in and do a revolve, okay? This is what sparked the question. I got an email about this from a friend of mine. And so the section that I wanna revolve is this line. And then the vector that I wanna use is this line. Now this notice is the spline. Okay, that's this guy right over here. So I'm gonna pick on my spline. Notice where I select on my spline. It's very important for you to pay attention to that because if I grab this and drag it, right, I'm gonna have a different point, arc length. Okay, now what's happened is it's picked a vector and that vector is at this point on that spline. Select OK. So the revolve happens. Everything looks beautiful. Couldn't be happier. Now, if I go in there and for some reason want to change this spline, I'm going to double click on spline. Actually, I'm going to do, you know what? I'll double click on it. Now, I'm going to go in, turn on single segment. I'm going to go in and say I want an extra control point. So I'm going to make this a two degree or third order. There's my extra control point. I want to move this specify my vector, we'll go this way, and I'm gonna take my control point and I'm gonna start moving it. And the most craziest of all things begins to happen. That revolve still revolves, even though the vector, in scare quotes, that I selected is not really a vector. Okay, that is now a conic. Basically, it's a spline, two, two degree spline, third order. How is the revolve revolving? Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and double click on the revolve. What I want you to notice is by default, it selected, because it was uninferred initially when I picked my vector. And that inference was, well, I'm picking a spline. So that point on that spline has a tangent vector that tangent vector to that spline is what is creating the revolve. And notice here, I have other options. All right, I can reverse that versus at that point. I can also come in here and say alternate solution. Now these are not really gonna create anything that can be revolved around because there's only one solution for the revolve basically in this case. So that's what we get up get up into. So if I hit okay on that, you'll notice it just fails to revolve because it cannot revolve around this way. It can't take this and revolve that. So I just undid that. So what's happening is when I selected that spline, the infer picked the point on that spline and made a tangent vector to said spline to make that revolve. And I thought that was very interesting, really, really smart. And then that led to other questions. Now, this is something else that I've run into in the past, but haven't really studied it in depth until recently. And I thought this was a very interesting thing. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm gonna undo, undo. Now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna create a couple of extrusions. So I'm gonna extrude this line. This is a standard line, line number one, standard line. I'm gonna extrude that, what's my vector? I'll pick the Z and I'll go out 500 and apply. Now, 
Next thing I'm going to do is do another extrusion. I'm going to extrude this spline, this guy right over here. What's my vector? Just go and Z again. Same exact everything. And something mystical happens. Okay. Notice it's a different color. Notice you see facets on it. Okay, it's called an extrusion, right? Extrusion number four here in the part navigator, but it's different. Now, if I go in and, I, you know, I don't know if this is done on purpose. I don't know the reasoning. I don't understand it fully. It was just something interesting that I needed to talk about. Okay, and this is why is as you're working away, you see something and it's not quite right, but a lot of people just have a tendency to work through it, which can cause problems later on. And I'm gonna get into the problems that this can cause later on. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and go control I, I'm gonna to go to information. I wanna do an information on this. But I don't wanna get an information on the feature. The feature is gonna be the same for each one. What I want information on is the face. Okay, this gives me a deeper dive level of information on said object. I'm going to pick both. I picked this face first. I picked this face second. I'm going to select OK. Now, information on object one of two. All right. Notice it says something very, very interesting. It calls it a convergent face of extrusion. Now, I'm going to go to the other one uh, for object for two of two face of extrude. Very different. So the reason why it is this, what they call medium royal, this blue, and not medium midnight, which is the default we expect for surfaces, is that because this is a convergent body. It doesn't say so here, but it says so out here and it says so over here. So if I do an extrusion with a spline that is a one degree single segment spline, I end up with a convergent. Now, if I increase this, I'm gonna select two and select okay. Notice the facet goes away. The color stays the same because object color doesn't change when you do an edit like that. It just doesn't. Now, if I were to do the information on this again, information, face, I'm just going to pick the face of this. Look at that. Face of extrusion, not convergent. Okay. There's no, nothing convergent. So if I'm using a one degree spline, makes it a convergent body. And I don't, like I said, I have no idea why. I think it's kind of interesting. It's kind of cool, but I'd be willing to bet other people have done this and maybe potentially ran into some problems. Maybe there's a setting that I haven't went in there and dug it around and, and, and try to discover what's going on with said setting. All I know is that it just made a convergent body. Now, I'm gonna undo that and it's back to a convergent, I know it is. Now remember, convergent bodies are basically STLs, but you can use those STLs as a so solid body or a sheet body in NX. So their properties are a little different than a standard STL. And their properties are also a little different than the standard surface or solid in NX as well, and I'll demonstrate. So if I come in here now and said, well, you know what I wanna do is I wanna take this and I wanna step this out. I wanna export this out. So I go into File, Export, and I'm going to do a step. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down here. Selected objects. Notice it'll let me pick the surface. It'll let me pick the curve. It'll let me pick the spline. It will not let me pick the convergent body. I cannot do a step to a convergent body. It will not allow it. Remember, convergent bodies are STL bodies. They're STL files. The reason why this has this additional face in here is because as an STL, remember, STLs can only support 
planar faces. That's it. So an STL has three dots, three points, they form a triangle. And it puts that triangular face in there between those three points. That's always the case. It cannot be anything else when it comes to an STL file. It absolutely in every way has to be points. And those points absolutely have to be, in this case, closed in for STLs with triangles because triangle has the linear edges and it's planar. That's why this cannot be selected to step it out. If I tried stepping it out, entire part, whatever, notice that's not an option in here. Okay, now why is this important? Because if I come in here, I'm gonna do something crazy. I'm gonna do an intersection curve between here and here. Like, come on, boy, that's great. NX does it, right? It sees this as a regular old fancy uh, body, right? It does a wonderful job. Now I'm gonna extrude this curve and I'm gonna go in this direction. Well, that's seen as a curve. It's not a spline, whatever, causing the body to be an STL, this, or convergent, this is an actual surface. Now, if I were to do something like go into surface, and then I were to somehow use this in as part of the surface, so I'm gonna do a trim and extend. For example, I'm gonna trim this body to this body. Notice this became part of the STL. If I come in, throw an edge fillet in on this, Well, it's part of the STL. If I come in here now and try to export a step, selected objects, it will not let me pick it. So if I had to step this out, send this to somebody, I can't do it that way. I'd have to send an STL. Right? I can export out an STL. Now, if I do that, file, export, STL. Well, you look at that. It allows me to pick it. So interesting things happen with that curve. Now, if you run yourself into a corner, what I find you can do, let me double click on that spline, and I already did it earlier, single segment, just up this to two, select OK. This now is no longer, let me go export step. It is now a step file. Okay, so very, very interesting things happen when you're using a one degree single segment spline. And um, like I said, I haven't explored it much further than that, right? Maybe my friends over at Siemens will see it and you know, say something to me. Or maybe I can not be so lazy and ask. But uh, in case you ever run into those problems, using a curve that's spline like that this is why it's a very easy fix i got to do is increase the degree by one make it a single segment increase the degree and poof you have a much cleaner something than before or you could just draw in an actual line right you can come in here little curve draw in a line actually before i do that let me undo that we go back to an stl as you can see is an stl i can go in here and just draw in a line and, uh, you know, I'm kind of guilty of this. Actually, let me go up to the spline. Bring this over. Go like that. Go to line. Let's go to endpoint. Oops. I have scaling on my screen right now, so everything's a little weird when it comes to picking things. So I've drawn in the line. I can take my spline, I can replace that with that line. Let's do this. I don't want to delete it because it's going to come back and give me some problems later on. Now you'll notice this is no longer an STL. So if I were to try to step this out, it would step it out and it has a line in there for its reference. Okay. So interesting things.